All right, so I'm here with Jeff Slifer. Yep. And we're going to talk about this tractor here today. 14, yep. Yeah. What year is it? 72. 72, so she's an early one. Yep, sure enough. How long are you at? Uh, since about 90, 91, right in there. Okay. Somewhere along that line. All right, so she's been around for a while. Yep. Uh, I overhauled it, I don't know, 20 plus years ago. Before I got it, it did have a cab on it, and I had it repainted. Just the hoods, as you can tell, the frame's not. But still ain't too bad, too bad shape. No, did you put a open station platform on it then too? You yeah. switched platform, did it right? Yeah. And those are, that's the first thing I noticed, 66 series fenders, instead of just putting 806 fenders on it or something. Yes. So they cost you a few bucks when you took the cab off, I bet. It wasn't that bad, then. You've got to remember, that's been 30-some years ago. I suppose. Uh, it's not, it wasn't the remands and none of that. I just, those are IH it. fenders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure enough. I think I got, I don't remember where I got them at now, salvage yard somewhere. But, uh, but it's all a tractor. Put it this way, uh, if I'm coming out to get on a tractor to do something, and they're all sitting here, I'll get on that one every time. That's, it's your favorite. Yeah. Okay. It is. Actually, it is. Okay. Yeah. Except in the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> like a little protection from, from the winter. Sure enough. Yeah, I don't blame you for that. Although, looks to me like you got an IH heat hauser up there. So. That is, believe it or not, actually, that is brand new. Really? That come with this tractor. And it was still in the box. But the box fell apart. The uh, window for it, I got it covered up in the basement in the house. I mean, it is. So you can see through it. Yes, it is clear. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, most of them are yellow and. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the original windbreaker wow. too. I ain't put that on and it's scratch up no, the paint. No, no, no. I wouldn't either, but it's pretty cool to have. Yeah, it is. I really ought to put that in the basement too. But yeah. I don't. Then you wouldn't see it. That's correct. You're right. Yeah. So keep her out. Well, I've got other tractors for cabs, you know, so we don't really need to put well, that on. Well, right. Yeah. So, I gotta add, so when I saw this tractor in one of Tony's videos a long time ago, I seen the Hanco throttle handle on it, and the pyrometer. So what's the story behind it? Were they on there, or did you put them on? I put them on there. Okay. Uh, that was, what, uh, I like to tell everybody, this series tractors, you gotta have them on there. I mean, there's not a, greater feeling than reaching up and grabbing a handful of horsepower and ripping that son of a bitch down, kind of <laughs> watching that pyro go up to 15 or so and it kind of back down and, you know, it, uh, it, it's, uh, I don't know, better than sex maybe, I don't know, but <laughs> it's right up there. All right, all right, fair enough. So, she's hydraulic seat. Yep. Um, two remotes, is yes. it? It is two remotes. Yep. Um, yeah. Just your, your basic, basic old 14. Old 14. Yeah. And this one, for some reason, uh, I don't know why, but it, uh, it's got a bad habit of getting stuck. It's been stuck several times. Oh, yeah? yeah. You got a pretty good neighbor that usually will help me out. Ah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, Back when, how'd you find the tractor? Or were you looking for a 1466 or you just fall, find this tractor? Actually, yeah, I found it through a John Deere dealer. Um, gosh, it's up the other side of Decatur. Uh, gosh, I can't think of the name of it now. But, but anyway, this tractor was actually still sitting on the farm. This guy had traded it and it was still sitting on the farm. And I went on further north and looked at it and they delivered it straight to here. Okay, so and how'd you find it then? I did actually through the Agri News at that time when it was listed in the paper. And yeah, Agri News used to be real. That was the farmer's Bible thirty yeah, years ago. There were guys up by us that would get the Illinois paper in yeah. Wisconsin. You know, it, four sections, you know. Yeah. It, if you wanted to read it all, it took a while. But yeah. You know what? Well, you things, didn't have you didn't have nothing else to do if you were going to read, no. so you might as well read the paper, you know. So you didn't just get, a, kids, you just didn't get on Tractor House and go 1466. No. You know. No, you actually had to do a little hunt there. Yeah. 
seeking. It was a lot nicer when they had the pictures, you know, you could find find it quicker. Yeah. Instead of having to read, you know, everything. Yeah, I don't, I, it. So, how many hours are, are out there now? Well, I replaced the tack. That one, the original quit on me and then had like, uh, I, don't quote me on this, I got a kid up there, but like 2,800 hours. And it sh right now it should be, I'm guessing 56, okay. 5,700 hours. Does it, does it got the, the tack with the your selector it, on it? The original one that did, but at that time I couldn't find anybody to rebuild them. And I screwed up, I let them talk me into putting a generic tack in there. Yep. With the plastic lens and you can't see. Oh. It's, yep. I, it's on the bucket list, I need to get that old tack fixed and put back in there. Yep. Really do, get the light in and all that. But yeah. Yep. So you, it, you did overhaul it. Yep. Did she need anything else along the way? I've never put a torque in it. Uh, the only thing, I did put a clutch in here probably about five years ago. Yeah. Be, the only reason I put a clutch in it then was because the, uh, oh, the PTO shaft goes back. Yep. That was leaking and yep. while you're there. Might as well. Yeah, sure not. Other than that, not a. Not a bit of trouble. Does it got a dip lock? Does this one got a dip no, lock? No, it doesn't. Okay. So the rear end has been good on, on oh, this one. Yeah, I've never touched it. Okay. You have a new brake? Uh, not actually not on this one. Okay. I never have on this one. Well, she's narrowed up. So did did it plant? I never did plant with this one. Called to me. Uh, yeah, I did. Actually, I did okay. for a while. Yep. Yep. Because I was going to say, she's, she's set for 30s. Oh, yeah. You know. When, so how long were you narrow roads? I've always been narrow roads. Always been yeah. narrow roads. Okay. okay. So what, when did you start farming? Actually, 1987. Okay. Was my first go around. Started out with a 560 and a B. John Deere. Okay. You weren't colorblind then. Well, the B was dad's. Oh, okay. He let me use it. I, I guess it really wasn't mine. But. Okay. And the 560, I hated that tractor from day one. I kept it about 30 years, actually, before I finally got rid of it. Gas or diesel? Gas. Okay. That's and probably better than a diesel, though. Pardon? Probably better than a diesel, in a way. Oh, yeah. I always started, and I had it on a feet grinder for a long time, and you know that swinging your leg over and sitting underneath? Yeah. It, it just wasn't. I kind of come out with something a little better there, maybe, but I just I just never did like that tractor at all. But I kept it. Yep. So at the time you bought this, was was the 560 and the oh, yeah. B still? So this was well, I bought a 10. Well, actually, I bought that 806. Okay. First, and then I bought the 10, and then this 14, and then the 52, and then the Ford. And then the box car. I okay. Just, I just got a bad habit of not getting rid of anything. <laughs> you can't have too many tractors. Well, you I mean, just you get emotionally attached, I, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So then, 806 to this was the jump. Yep. That's a big jump. It is. Yeah. I picked up a bunch more ground. Okay. And I had to do something. Yeah. And at the time, and best bang for the buck right here. So being that you didn't have a cab at the time, did you leave the cab on this for a little while? My 1066 got a cab. Okay. So when I, and basically they pulled the same stuff. Yeah. If it's, you know, cold or whatever, yeah, we used the 10. If it's nice, we used okay. the 15. Yep. Pretty much. That's the way that, that time period went. So you had her, I mean, she's got nine bolt axe bolt duels. Yep, sure enough. Are they IH duels? You know what, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I think they are. I'm did they come with the tractor when you bought it? Yes, they did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, weights and all, it's not like it is today. You know, you go to buy this series tractor, then with no weights, no dual hubs. I, 
I hate when they do that. I, I know why they do it, yeah. but, you know, you know kind of ought to keep it together, or at least give you the option, you know, to buy yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. Kind of keep it together. It's, them ain't cheap no more. No, they are very expensive. Um, so it had phone rack weights on her, and, and the, she was dueled up, and where the, where the hood, the hood couldn't have been painted too bad because the casting is still pretty See, good. I've repainted the casting. Oh, you did? Hood. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The, the frame part, the main frame itself was. Okay. But you know how they wore where the cab was at. Yes. Yep. And got that fixed so everything matched. Right. Funny story on this, this one. I put a Schweitzer turbo on this piece of ground I was farming across the highway. And uh, the older gentleman was mowing a yard across the road. And he used to be a tractor puller. And he retired from that. And I, he sat there on his lawnmower. Now, I made four or five rounds. And of course, you know, the old Schweitzer when you let off her. He, yep. I, I finally got close enough to him. I got off the tractor and said, are, are you OK? I said, I've seen you sitting here for a while. I didn't know if you was having trouble. You all right? I said, yeah, I just keep running it. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it just made my day, you know. It, uh, yeah, it's got a unique sound to it. I mean, yeah. Well, and, and uh, you know, the 66 Series International, when you were a kid around here growing up, I bet you got a chance to see some of them. You oh, know, yeah. You yeah. get to see, like, Plug and... Um, those guys, but uh, who was the guy with the bad dog? The there were a lot of '66 series, really strong running. Uh, Snicker brothers, Rodney and Dennis had to, at that time when I was growing up. I know you'd get in trouble for saying it now, but they had uh, white trash and black trash. The '66 series. Yep. When they come rolling in, you, yeah, that they made the show. Yeah. Sure enough. I mean, these were. I mean, they were pulling tractors when you saw them. So did that kind of, is that what got you wanting a 1466? It had a, a lot to do with it, yeah, but I just, they're a muscle tractor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, and, and really, it's, technically the 1566 was bigger than the 14, but everybody wants, the 14 is just, the tractor. Yeah, and then the three speed transmissions yep. and the, yep. and the planetary plan rear end and, you bet. and thousand only PTO, which, so being a livestock guy, I bet you use the PTO Ooh, yeah. plenty. I mean, yeah. some she almond her. Yeah, well, some. I kind of depends on the weather, but usually I, this time of year, if it's soft in the spring, I'll, I'll put it on that magnum. Yep. With the front wheel assist, in case you, you know. Yep. Well, back, some, back when you bought her. Oh, yeah. So she's on the spreader. Yep, yep. Did you, uh, with cattle, did you have chopped corn silage at all? or? I hired that done. Okay, you did. Yeah, all right. Custom, had a custom done. Yep. And you, if you're feeding steers, did you put up any hay at all? Uh, yeah, but it's all, no square bales, it's all round bales. Yep, okay. So did it do a little bit of that? Yeah. Too? Okay. Yeah. Uh, this mower, that's, this mower goes on here. Yep, yep. Uh, it was kind of heavy and got plenty of weight here and oh yeah and a lot of ditch bank mowing and stuff with I want I want some weight behind me too you wouldn't want to use the 560 for that uh, no oh okay all right just checking no in fact uh, when I first got this mower I put it on that 806 and I turned out the drive out here I thought, oh shit this ain't gonna work yeah <laughs> no flood and tires or nothing and I brought her back and put her on here yeah that's a lot of leverage oh absolutely it can do a great job if you don't get stuck oh for sure so what uh, if you started in 87 you were pretty young in your career in 88 19 I bought my first farm when I was 19 Okay, so 88 rolls around and... Uh, it turns dry. Yeah. Well, how was that? Was that a little scary when you're... I've done dumber things, uh, <laughs> but at the time I was working a full-time job in town. Okay. Too. So that's what got me over that. Yep. I mean, worked a lot of overtime. I didn't get married until I was practically 30, so, you know... 
it was a little easy to, easier to save money and work your own schedule there. Right, right. No, I don't regret that either. Maybe if in case of wife yours just I don't want to hear oh, it. So no, I'd be lost without mine, but it, uh, that had to be a little scary though with the crop. Was it a crop failure down here or did yes. you? Okay, so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. I remember about the third week of July, while the corn, it just kind of like it lost its collar, kind of turned whitish. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, it was over. Uh, but nothing to do. But, well, thank God we got crop insurance now, you know, to. Right, yeah. It's kind of protect us somewhat. Did you chop it or anything for feed? To... At that time, I didn't. Okay. And in fact, at that time, I didn't even have any cattle. I had I had some hogs at the time. And hogs aren't going to eat silage. No, I, <laughs> that was, I, I don't miss them, I, really, to be honest with you. I, yeah, I don't blame you there. I enjoy the bacon, but... Were you fair or finished? No, I just raised feeder pigs. Okay. Bought feeder pigs to sell barn and fed them out then. Um, I guess I did stay in it for a while. Did you make it to 98? I made it to 98. I was, I was trying to think of the year that was because I remember buying uh, 33, $34 feeder pigs. Yep. And selling them for 18 and 20. Yeah. <laughs> well, this, 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 this game's not for me. Nope. No, it was, those were bad times. I mean, there, guys were shipping, like you couldn't even ship the sows and fours because you couldn't get enough to pay the trucking. It's bloodbath. I mean, yeah, it. Well, I admire the guys that's still in it. I do. Uh, wow, I, that that game has definitely changed. Yeah. You got bigger. You got out. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. That, without a doubt. I really wasn't prepared to get big. Not not in the hogs. No, no. So, did you decide then after that to start the steers, or had you started feeding a few cattle before that? I, when I was younger, I had cattle, and then uh, living at home, I had cattle. But uh, I kind of started the steer thing on my own. That come along about I don't know, '04 somewhere in there, maybe. Okay. And, and I really enjoy that. Yep. Well, I mean, you, you gotta. I mean, if you could feed your corn, or you could truck your corn. It, it fills in some gaps. Yeah. Uh, it's not a money maker every year. Nope. Uh, I think we've all been there. You take the highs and the lows and Absolutely. Stay on the roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. Well and I think it's a little something rewarding about having some livestock around. It, there is. You kinda of enjoy that. Seeing that having something to do, which I know there's always something to do no matter what in life. But yep. to have those chores is kinda of alright sometimes. Yeah, and then uh, going out when it's you know twenty below zero and wind blowing forty mile an hour, I, it, it's rewarding. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you think at the time the next guy that bitches about the price of beef, I'm gonna smack him right in the mouth. Yeah. You know, let's trade for a while. You know, this like this winter's been fairly mild. Yeah. It's not that bad, and everything I got everything set up. You know, it's gonna have to be pretty drastic. Electricity or something's going to have to go out for a while or have a major malfunction. It's, I usually don't have any trouble with anything freezing up. Okay. So that's kind of relief there. Well, and, and uh, are you feeding uh, mostly ground corn? Uh, corn and uh, distillers. Okay. So are you are you doing a TMR or just mix, mixer mills? Just mixer mill. Okay. It, uh, corn uh, distillers and uh, and a balancer pellet protein. Yep, yep. And it seems to work pretty good. But this way you get to drive a tractor in the winter time when all the crop farmers are just standing around going, I wish I could do something other than plow snow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure enough. There you go. <laughs> I don't get to go to Florida with the rest of them though. <laughs> well, not every crop farmer goes no. to Florida, I don't. I, someday. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be where you're at in the winter time. It can get cold. Yep. Well, I've always heard this. I really don't know, but um, is your humidity less up there where it don't feel as cold? 
I don't know. When it's below zero, it's just plain cold. Just plain cold. It's just, yeah. Okay. How deep do you bury your water lines up there? Uh, shoot, six feet. Five feet, yeah. Woo. Uh, you got to watch it like one of those one of those really bad years. You'll watch it in the driveway. Because, you know, if you've got a water line coming underneath the driveway and that's exposed, you got to watch that. Um, three foot as deep to go around here. I'd always heard that up there too. Like, Jesus, what do you do if you ever got trouble? I, everybody got a backhoe? Um, well, what they'll do actually is uh, um, the well guys will come out and they'll they'll use the arc welder, put the ground on the one end and you know lead on the other, and they'll heat that pipe up. And what do you do if it's PCV? Or you, you everything you guys put in up there is metal pipe? Well. Um, I guess they're running plastic water lines, you know, and stuff too. I honestly, I don't know. I haven't had to deal with that, but yeah, we, I've, I've heard of them doing that around here too. Yeah, yeah. You know, the old metal water pipes, that's, that's they do. Yeah, but you know, um, if you got enough livestock, you'll keep the water flowing. All the time. Yeah, and I use the energy free waters. Yep. No, no heat or no nothing to them. And there's a trick to that too, um, like in the evening. Or sometimes even in the morning, I'll just go knock the plugs out of the water. Yep. Let them run for a while. Yeah. Get that warm water circulated through there, and I generally have no trouble. Yep. I'm not saying anything could go wrong, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems to work for me. Yep. Yep. So you said the the ten. You got this before the 1066? No, I Oh, they had the 1066. Yeah, okay. Had it first. Okay. That was, the 10 was actually my first cab driver. Okay. And I planted with the 10 for several years. And if a, thanks to some guys around here uh, growing corn and Nick, and kind of got me talked into GPS. Yeah. I don't need that crap. And heard Nick one. One night over, Tony's drinking a few cocktails. And said, God, the GPS wouldn't work. He's running. I think he's running the grain cart. He said, My arms is killing me. You know, Nick with them big old pythons of his. And I just started laughing. I, you big pussy. <laughs> but, you know, after I got it, Tony was pretty instrumental in getting me started on it. But, God damn, this yeah. is pretty nice. That is probably one of the downfalls of the 66ers. There's not really a good way to put them. I'm not saying it can't be done, but there's not a good way to put it. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they wasn't taking that in the 70s, by no means. No. I I thought it was a little bit maybe false advertising on the steering wheel, and it said comfort and position, power steering, and I thought, well, oh, that's a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the case. I have a buddy of mine always said that about it. Case uh, A, Comfort King, yeah. 1030, he goes, Somebody ought to start a lawsuit against Ace for that. <laughs> well, it beat, beat a horse and range. Yep, you know. it did. It did. Or it wouldn't for me. Yeah. Yep. Them's the guys that hats go off to, you know, you, you put the horses oh. away and feed them and... Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think people realize that that was one of the biggest things to revolutionize agriculture was suddenly Talk about overproduction when a quarter of your production went to feed. Could you imagine if a quarter of the corn went just to feed oh, the tractors? Geez. That's yeah. That that's what we dealt with, you know, prior to mechanization. I I hadn't really talked to anybody. I always wondered, you know, you take an older guy that's farming horses all his life, you know, and say he's fifty years old. They brought a tractor out, you know, and well, I don't want that noisy thing around, you know, I can get along just fine. I, I wonder how long that time period to get everybody kind of on board. It wasn't until I think the 50s before there were more farm tractors than horses. Is that right? Yeah. But some guys, um, so I read a story one time in a book. This guy had a farm all regular, or maybe it was an F30 or something like that. and. He didn't want tractors. Um, he's like, I have no, we'll just keep farming horses. Horses are great. I don't need to deal with, you know, any of that mechanical stuff. And it was like a spring day and he was plowing. 
and a spring thunderstorm came and he was resting the horses, you know, because you got to, it, it'd be like having a bad radiator in this and every so often you got to shut her down and idle her back. The tree got hit by lightning but the horses were on there and killed its team. So to try and get its plowing time and to try and get compatible horses to pull all this, it just, he couldn't do it. So they ended up, uh, he, that's how the dealer talked him into a tractor and then he couldn't believe how much more he got done when they didn't have to, you know, you could shut the tractor off in the field and go in the house at, at the end of the day or whatever, not bring the horses in and, and you know. that feed them. Right. So I, I think that's, you know, and speaking of this, this one thing that I bet a lot of people don't realize, but so when the tractors took, you know, got big with everything, um, the farm all revolutionized it because that was the first all purpose tractor yeah. that could grow crop, could do all that. And this, the 66 series is the last series international tractors to bear the farm all name under international harvest. Yep, sure not. You know, and the black stripes were the first ones to not say farm all, and but, but yeah, that that traces back to what 1921. Yeah, that farm all regular, I think they called yeah, it. Yeah, somewhere in there. Like yeah, yeah, early twenties. <laughs> you know, and that was the beginning of the Rock Island, Illinois farm all plant, and boy, in a short period of time, what a change! Can you imagine that? So, wow, how many, did you ever mow board plow with this? Actually, this one I, I haven't. Okay. I, I never mow board with it. Ten, I have. Okay. But you probably pull what, five or six bottom? Yeah, five bottom. Okay, compare that with, I mean, you you didn't need a lot of horses to pull even a two bottom. Well, right? The, oh, yeah. And your soil types, uh, down at Dad's, we should have given it back to the Indians, it's black muck. Yep. And, and it pulls hard. Um, I, how they ever got that ground for them with horses, I'll never know. I mean, in today's world, Peter would be out here and you'd be in jail. <laughs> you, you kill horses. I don't know how they done it. Yeah. I, I really don't. Uh, apparently they got her done somehow, but it's been awful hard on the horse, I just thought. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, suddenly, I mean, you go from, what, were you pulling 516s or 518s? Uh, 516s. Yep, 516s from, you know, even like a farm all regular, maybe pulling 214. 214s, yeah, or maybe even 212s. Yeah, to go yeah. from that to this in that short period of time and to where we are today. Could you possibly imagine with a 212s trying to plow today's corn fodder in? Oh. Well, they used to burn yeah. fodder off. That just, you know. The, I'm sure, you know, in that time era, it was to check rows and, yeah, you know, I just couldn't imagine the 214 trying to get through. Oh. It, it never happened. Nope. No, it's, it, it's crazy to think where we've come and where it's headed. It hurts my head to think where we're headed, so I guess I try not to look too far ahead, so. And the, the speed that it goes in. Yeah, I I mean, corn plant used to last a month. From the very earliest start to the late start, it pretty much in a given week, one yeah, good today. seven day period. I mean, it's pretty much all done. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just amazing. But and when this tractor was new, you would have plowed it. Probably disc it, you know, field cultivate it. Probably yeah. flies. Yeah, maybe cult a packet yeah. or, or whatever. Irrigator, possibly. Yep, yeah. and then plant it, and then you would start cultivating. And, you know, today a lot of guys will just pull in with a no-till planter and hit it with a big sprayer, and away we go. Yeah, or maybe one pass tillage too, or? Yeah, where? You know, even, even the sprayer, look at the sprayers. I mean, in the last, I want to say 20 years. Yep. You know, when 80, 90 foot booms, oh my God. Yeah. It, now, I know they got at least 120. I'm sure they're, they're bigger than that yeah, now. Yeah, who knows out west, but. Oh. So to think about what we've seen and going from this, I do think 
probably you were more connected to what you were doing when you drove this than you are with the newer tractors. Oh, and yeah. the newer tractors are nice. Well, I'm this right or wrong, I know I'll get beat up for saying this. I always looked at the tractors the same way. Horsepower is horsepower is horsepower. Whether you spend half a million dollars on it or you spend fifty thousand dollars on it. It's whatever you're able to put up with or want to maintain or whatever your comfort style is. Yep. But you're never gonna change that. So you gotta be more efficient at that or the way I look at it. Yep. Yep. Well and you better well, either way you look at it, you better really enjoy this stuff if you're gonna do it. You betcha. You know, so it not not every day's a no, fun day. It's not, but you know, if you didn't if you didn't love this stuff you wouldn't be doing it. Exactly. So we should probably let Tony get his left rest his arm, so that's uh yeah. Yeah, he, he may need to exercise. He that. might, he might. So, well, thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, you too.